On the bench today, we have a real POS computer. This Dell 780 is the scourge of offices everywhere, too cheap to upgrade their equipment. eBay value sits at between $30 to $50, and I actually found a pair of them for $40 together. I'll put that link down below if it's still available. We're rocking an Intel Core 2 Duo E3500 at a surprisingly fast 3.16 GHz with a single 4 gig stick of 1333 MHz RAM backed up by a 250 GB SATA 2 7200 RPM hard drive. And thanks Dell, I do appreciate the fact you list the CPU sticker as part of the system configuration. Running Windows 7, this PC is pretty painful, but Windows 10 is basically unusable. This got me thinking about the oft forgotten by the mainstream third option, Linux. About 20 minutes later, I had an ISO burn to a USB drive and a lightweight derivative of Ubuntu called Zubuntu installing. I instinctively grabbed my fast USB 3.1 drive to do the install with, as this is the one I actually do Windows installs with. Before realizing this computer doesn't actually have USB 3, let alone USB 3.1. Post installation, there's an instant improvement. Boot takes 46 seconds, aka only about 22 seconds longer than my wife's Ryzen PC, which has a SATA SSD as a boot drive. Just browsing and navigating the UI is slick and smooth. Opening multiple programs at once is obviously slow, but wow, this is actually fun to use. Zubuntu is apparently named after Ubuntu, obviously, and XFCE, which is an open source and very lightweight desktop environment for Unix-based operating systems. Perfect for our ancient PC. Okay, let's get serious, straight into video editing. Right away, OpenShot is more responsive and much easier to get an idea of what I'm actually doing, unlike the Raspberry Pi from last time. I can reasonably see myself actually using this as a normal video editor. The only major issue I had with it was crashing on export. Thankfully, exporting a 3 minute clip only took 10 or so minutes, so I could keep an eye on it and restart it if it failed. I'm not doing anything serious, just clipping out some silly parts from a stream my good friend Main Calico and I did a few weeks ago. A link to his Twitch and his Twitter will be in the description. If you want to hit A. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you looking? How do I use the controller? Oh, it's oh, it's an always online game. Uh, but it's single player. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like the clown I'm, suit. I'm I'm here for your son's birthday. I think I, I, think, right. I think I need my cowboy suit yeah. actually. Well, it's a sunny place. <laughs> 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 so you could probably hunt him in that. So I probably shouldn't have killed that guy, right? Probably not. No. Okay. Oh yeah, you. <laughs> I'd say, oh, there's a box to dump them in, or yourself. Yeehaw! <laughs> a link to the rest of the highlights video will be in the description. Obviously, this is several times stronger than the Pi, so I'm not going to bother showing any basic photo editing. I just wanted to demo an interesting piece of art software I found while researching for this video. What you're seeing now is my wife drawing in Krita, which is an open source painting and art application available for Windows, Mac, and obviously Linux. The link to the website will be in the description, and I encourage you to check it out because it's pretty cool. As a media player, it's actually pretty great. Anything under 4K will play perfectly in VLC and Kodi. Kodi actually works this time, which is nice. What other public domain movies can I actually watch, I wonder? Hmm, The Amazing Mr. X? This better have Mr. X from Remake 2 in it. Lastly, before we get into games, I wanted to give you an idea of the kind of raw CPU performance we're looking at. For that, I'm going to use a Blu-ray disc backup and Handbrake to compare it directly to the Ryzen 5 2600X I mentioned earlier. Woof, the Ryzen predictably has a lead, pushing out an average of 20 to 27 frames per second, but I didn't anticipate just how much of a lead. Our poor little Core 2 Duo is completely out of its depth, generating less than one frame per second. At this rate, the Ryzen PC will be done in about 100 minutes or so, whereas the Core 2 Duo would take over 59 hours. 
I actually wanted to try ripping and encoding a 4K disc, but given we're getting sub 1 FPS at 1080p, I think the machine suffered enough. Finally, we've got gaming. As you can see, we're pushing 50 to 60 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p. Ah, just kidding. I was streaming this from my laptop over the network. Steam in-home streaming works rather well and might make a case for this machine in a spare bedroom or for a child. As far as native gaming goes, our pickings are a little limited. Out of my 880 Steam games, 345 claim to be Linux compatible and only 6 actually ran on this machine. I tried to use Valve's Proton technology to run old Windows games like Battlefront 2, but nothing 3D worked at all. A dedicated GPU would probably fix all the issues here, but that would increase the price and the complexity, so I didn't try it. As far as the games that do work go, they all had relatively severe issues with screen tearing. Freedom Planet and Party Hard run pretty well at 60fps. Super Meat Boy and Worms Reloaded sit at about 45fps and are playable. Little Inferno and Typewriter run at about 25fps, so neither are very much fun. I'm sure this machine would be very good at emulating old games consoles, but due to the slightly sketchy legality of emulation, I won't be trying that out. It's kind of insane how much of a difference a lightweight OS like Zubuntu makes compared to Windows 10 on a crappy machine like this. If you installed Zubuntu on a more powerful machine, it would absolutely fly. Maybe when the new Ryzen CPUs come out, I'll stick my main edit machine into a small case and get a bit of a mini workstation going. I encourage anyone with a kind of sketchy, nasty old machine laying around to try this. It really breathed new life into this old machine. And the best part is, because it's Linux, it's all totally free.